Welcome to the world of the pterodactyl. This is a brief introduction to the sorts of positions that you can look forward to when adopting the pterodactyl repertoire. We'll start by looking at the main lines where white plays both e4 and d4 and brings out both knights. But do remember there are all sorts of varieties of the pterodactyl, some of which involve moving only the e4 or the d4 pawn to the center. We're going to fianchetto the bishop before we do anything else because this is the method that keeps our intentions hidden from the opponent for the longest period of time. It doesn't really matter which knight white brings out, you can play the pterodactyl either way. This is the Sicilian form of the pterodactyl because it could arise from a normal Sicilian defense where black has chosen 2g6. Of course white doesn't have to bring out both knights but we're starting with the main line. The pin on the knight at c3 is one force but there's also an immediate trap. What happens here if white brings the bishop out to c4? Oops! There goes the piece. Recently, even an experienced international player fell into this trap in a game against me at the American Open. Of course, most players will know better than to fall for the bishop c4 trap. Let's take a look at the other options. Suppose the pawn advances. Well, that's a gambit because we can just clobber at c3 and take the pawn. No, oh, that's pretty good. Pawn up. Our queen will retreat back to g7 and be perfectly safe. The capture at c5 is one of the most critical lines. And here we have two choices. We can either give up the bishop for the knight in return for grabbing a pawn. This is the Pteranondon approach. Or we can simply recapture the pawn at c5, um, in which case our queen will be kicked around a little bit. But so what? We capture the pawn. If they wish to kick us, well, that comes at a big price because, again, we take the knight. So instead, white is likely to perform some sort of defensive action and then our queen retreats to c7 and can be safely maintained there. Suppose white adopts a more classical approach. Uh, this is often the case when confronted by a strange opening. A player will simply make a developing move and in that case we reach the Quetzalcoatlus lines where black has played d6 and as you can see Bishop g4 is coming, uh, white can castle, but black will get castled quickly. Uh, black can play knight f6 at any point. We like to hold it back for a while because uh, it makes the opponent think. However, often we will be bringing the knight out into the normal dragon position. Of course, the pin on the knight at c3 can be such an annoyance that white decides to break the pin in what we call the unpin variation. That's fine, but just look at the board. Suppose white does move the knight away and expose the black queen to attack. Big deal, it goes back to d8. And then that knight sitting at d5 or b5 or whatever will get chased back by a little pawn and everything will also be fine. So the life in the main lines is uh, actually quite pleasant for black. And the positions have not been explored thoroughly, but they've been played enough times to know that there is no refutation or even any line which establishes a clear advantage for white. 